We welcome our brothers from Amba who are willing to step forward to speak to us, consult and discuss. We need the real sons of Amba and not those who claim to represent Amba. Maliki says the fighters are only adding to the chaos to further destabilize Iraq before upcoming elections in April. He'll have to calm the situation in Anbar before then if he's to show he still has control of the country. Rob Matheson, Al Jazeera. Well, Manal Omar is a Middle East specialist from the U.S. Institute of Peace. It works to resolve global conflicts, and she joins us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for being on Al Jazeera. So a resurgence of al-Qaeda in Anbar province. They're trying to carve up their own territory there. Do you think the government deploying more troops there uh, will succeed in pushing them back, or is it too late? I think that it's very essential that the government plays a role, but one of the challenges is to make sure that it's not just seen as a centralized government move, but that there are actual allies in a bar, particularly from the Sunni leadership, the tribal and religious civil society leadership that will join forces. And I think that there is a common enemy when people are looking at the extremists of al-Qaeda. The Western provinces, you know, two, three years ago were able to really push them out, and the fact that they're returning with such power is a concern not only for the Shia-controlled central government, but for the Sunni leadership as well. Why are they returning with such power, do you think? And to what extent is the widespread discontent uh, among Iraq's Sunni minority contributed to the sharp rise in violence that we saw in 2013? They're definitely tied together. There are three elements. One is that there has been a failure to really create an inclusive government that brings in the Sunni voice, and that has reached, that has resulted in an ability to really use, uh, you know, the Sunni foot soldiers recruiting ground, um, the discontent. Uh, but the other issue is really the Syria conflict has destabilized in Iraq in a much broader scheme of things in terms of, the, you know, what was once corridors between the border is now a wide open border mm. um, that the central government just can't control. Now, certainly, the, the war in Syria has destabilized a number of countries in the region. Uh, in Iraq, uh, over the course of, of the last year, in 2013, militants repeatedly targeted civilians, but they were also able to strike targets that should have been highly secure. What do you think this suggests about the state of security in the country? And are Iraqi security forces able and capable of defending the country, you think? I think that there's a great challenge. I mean, we've seen that with the entire international presence, with the U.S. troops securing the borders and stabilizing the country against an insurgency was extremely difficult. And the Iraqi army is spread thin. I think that the challenge is going to be finding a political solution as well as a security solution. Right. It's very important that the rhetoric doesn't tie al-Qaeda with Sunni leadership and that they're seen as two different elements, finding a political solution and finding a security solution. But to label everyone as al-Qaeda to label any Sunni leadership as terrorist will only feed into the instability and will not result in a stable solution. And you have uh, the first national election since the U.S. military withdrawal coming up uh, in uh, just a few months, since the U.S. military withdrawal in 2011. How optimistic are you that we'll see uh, a return to stability in Iraq and a reconciliation between Sunni and Shia after these elections? I think that it will be a very strong challenge. I mean, I expect in the next few months a rise in violence, a rise in the death toll, um, more instability. The true challenge will be after the elections and how quick the government can in, uh, form an inclusive government representation. I believe that there's too much at risk, both for the Sunni leadership and the Shia leadership, particularly with the sectarian violence across the region, and that the, that will serve as kind of an opportunity to push them to some type of, uh, you know, clear resolution after after the election. So in the short term, I'm not very optimistic, but I'm guardedly optimistic in the long term. Manal Omar, very good to hear your perspective. Manal Omar from the U.S. Uh, uh, United States Institute of Peace joining us there live from D.C. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. You're watching the news hour on Al Jazeera.